I would like to call the June 1st, 2022 Planning and Zoning Commission regular meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please call the roll. Anderson. Here. Burton. Here. Murray. Here. Totfest. Here. Smithwick Ailey. Here. And Baba. Here. We have a quorum. Thanks. Are there any changes to the agenda? Are there any objections to approving the agenda? Hearing none, the agenda is approved. Are there any changes to the minutes of our April 6th meeting? Are there any objections to approving the minutes? Hearing none, the minutes are approved. There are no presentations with prior notice. Um, there is public hearing for resolution PZ 2022-007, a resolution recommending the city council rename Kenai Avenue to Wright Avenue. May I have a motion to approve? Um, and please, um, can you state the full resolution for the record? I move to approve resolution PZ 2022-007, a resolution recommending the city council rename Kenai Avenue to Wright Avenue. Thanks. May I have a second? I second. Thank you. May we have the staff report, please? Yeah, thank you. Um, so I'd, I'd like to start uh, the discussion on this item by uh, pointing out that this is a little different than uh, what we normally do. This is a legislative uh, decision, one that is uh, ultimately made by the city council. Our city code requires the recommendation of this body uh, be presented to uh, city council uh, to help inform their decision. So this is a, a recommendation only, which is, again, different than our normal activities, uh, such as a variance or a conditional use permit, where uh, in those situations it affects a single single individual. In this case, it, it, you know, it, it affects uh, a number of individuals or potentially the entire city. So with that, um, I'd like to start by saying that we uh, received this request on April 13th, um, and in accordance with... Uh, our municipal code, uh, Title 12, which allows for renaming or naming new streets. Um, a formal request was received by Mr. Chuck Winters. Um, the name change being requested is for uh, Kenai Avenue, and the requested name uh, to be uh, is to be changed to um, Wright Avenue. We contacted the the borough and uh, asked them if, if Wright Avenue would be an acceptable name. Um, that is one of the first things we, we do whenever we receive these types of requests. And uh, what they do is they check their database and ensure that there's not a duplicate name or something that's very similar. They want to make sure that in the event of an emergency, CES is going to the right location. And if you have a, a, a Kenai Avenue and a Kenai Street, or a right avenue and a right avenue or right street, both in the same municipality, it can create a lot of confusion. Um, they they indicated that um, right avenue it would be acceptable. Uh, they also indicated that currently there are a number of Kenai streets um, to include. Let's see if I can find them here. Currently, we have Kenai Street, Kenai River Avenue, Kenai Keys Road, and Kenai Spur Highway. Um, so. They are supportive in the sense of eliminating one of the Kenai streets to something different. And they, again, they have no objection to uh, modifying it uh, to, to Wright Avenue. The, uh, the request that we got um, for this name change came from Chuck Winters. Um, he uh, is the nephew of Curly Wright. And Curly, as you may or may not know, he's here tonight. And um, he is a former mayor of Soldatna. He was uh, involved in the formation of the Chamber of Commerce and Progress Days. Um, and he's been here on the peninsula since the 1960s. Um, you may also know that he owns many businesses here in town. Um, the the uh, request is to ensure that Mr. Wright um, and the naming of the street 
then connects that, that name of that street to, to his history in town. Um, on Kenai Avenue currently, there are eight parcels total. Um, all of them have multiple frontages. So if you look at them, um, each one has not only a frontage on Kenai Avenue, but either on the Kenai Spur, Farnsworth Boulevard, or on Foothill Road. So they all have multiple frontages. Of the eight parcels that are on Kenai, uh, Kenai Avenue, six, uh, six of them are currently addressed as a Kenai Avenue address. So the, those six parcels would have to be readdressed and, and uh, well, uh, and, and it would be upon the property owners to you know do that that process which is to notify their utilities the post office um, anybody they correspond with would uh, need to be notified of the address change um, of those six parcels with the Kenai uh, Street or I'm sorry Kenai Avenue address two are vacant and um, four are currently have homes or businesses that are actively using their, their Kenai River or Kenai Avenue address. Staff did uh, go ahead and uh, notified property owners within 300 feet. 28 notices were sent, and as you see in your packet, a number of we received a number of responses, and uh, I'm not going to go over them because you have them and. Um, you ha uh, have the opportunity to review them. And it looks like we have a number of folks that would like to uh, participate in the public hearing as well. And that is the end of my staff report. Thank you. Are there any questions for staff? All right. Um, the public hearing is now open. Are there any member of the public who wishes to speak on this item? Yeah, please come forward and hit the, the button. If it's not already green, thank you. And um, yes, please. Yes, and just for the record, um, state your name and your address. Is it green? Good. I'm sorry. I thought it was green, just not bright enough. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, Wendy Maloon, and I'm representing Superstructures and the 13 businesses that are associated with it. And I am representing them because of the hardship it will put on 13 individual businesses. I have one letter, and I believe some of the others have letters as well. But this may be shortened and not needed because I understand Mr. Wright um, was not in favor of this naming, this changing to his name. So um, I don't know if I should yield to Mr. Wright and then have the right to come back, or what should I do? <laughs> Just keep talking, you've got three okay. whole minutes. I've got to get my glasses. <laughs> I have a letter from uh, New Beginnings Family Services. It's Dear Chairperson Vadla and Commissioners, I Heather Morning, MSCDCI, MAC, CATP, and the owner of New Beginnings Family Services, LLC, located at 224 Kenai Avenue, Suite 103. As a private clinical pr practitioner, asking to change the street name from my business alone includes a charge to all articles of incorporation, business licensing, business cards, flyers, banking, social media, professional memberships, professional credits, uh, credentials, letterhead, insurance, outside contracts, client service agreements, clinical forms and tools, and marketing. I am only one out of 12 businesses I am aware of on Kenai Avenue who will incur similar expenses, expenses within their business to accommodate such change. I am not saying honoring honoring Curly is wrong. However, I feel it is Im imprudent that the commission of the commission to ask other community members, business owners to be financially tasked 
uh, in order to accommodate honoring another. In my observation, it would appear to be less of an impact making the change to a residential street, causing no financial impact. In addition, would it not honor Curly further to have the street he actually lives on, 190 Foothills Road, named accordingly to better honor the memories of his family and friends who cherish their time at his home. And she included um, attachments one and two showing that his address is actually Foothills, not Kenai Avenue. Thank you for your time in this matter. Sincerely, Heather D. Morning, with her credentials, uh, 224 Kenai Avenue. <clears throat> and as you know, um, Superstructures Building was built there in 1977 by Dick Ruckman and has stood there for these past 45 years. So you can only imagine how many vendors, suppliers, manufacturers, all of these that are going to be shipping to us. Now that's, I am the executive officer <clears throat> there at Superstructures and Ruckman Investments. This honestly imposes a real hardship. After 45 years, I have hundreds of contacts that would have to be changed because we do manufacturing, we do industrial, we do commercial, all of this, and it, it, it's burdensome, burdensome. We do have actually 13 independent businesses at 224 Kenai Avenue and 214 Kenai Avenue. The business agent, as Ms. Morning has pointed out, the business address changes would include all of our uh, incorporation would have to be changed, our business licenses, state, city, borough, the domain addresses, uh, banking institutions, insurance companies, properties, um, your reports, borough sales tax, city of Soldotna sales tax, which you don't want to miss that. <laughs> Business cards, brochures, advertising, marketing labels, mailing labels, signs, automobile advertising, etc. And each one of these have business cards and letterhead and everything else with the name and address of 224 Kenai Avenue or 214 Kenai Avenue. Therefore, this comes at a great expense with all the manufacturers, builders, suppliers, vendors, customers for sub superstructures and Ruckman Investments alone, it is hundreds of changes. That may sound grandiose, but I assure you it is not after 45 years. <laughs> and actually 55 years for Ruckman Investments. And we have those business licenses to prove that he has been here doing those things that long. So to change these records for tax purposes, etc. Several of our tenants may not be able to attend this meeting, but have asked to be included in this request for denial of the ill-proposed name change. Under Beauty Unlimited, there's Holly Segura, Jen Villa, Susan Day, Anna Love, Derek Black, New Beginnings, um, et cetera, by Sue, Shackley Distribution, Northern Eagle Products, Richard Pedersen Automotive, Kelly Imaging. This puts a great hardship on all 13 businesses. I doubt that the city of Soldotna would be able to provide hours of secretarial staff to accomplish this or funding to reimburse the business costs that it will impose on each of our tenants, including us. When um, Dick called Chuck Winters and told him he could not support the name change, Chuck's reply was, that's too bad. I've had to do address changes. I am sure that if either Chuck or Curly understood all the ramifications of this change, I feel certain they would withdraw this name request. Perhaps change the name of the street he actually lives on, where he is. We do honor him, we do respect him, but we do respectfully ask that this name remain Kenai Avenue to avoid all of these horrendous changes and burdens for the people there. So the lots may be empty, but the buildings are full of individual businesses. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Well, I need a Kleenex. <laughs> I'm full of the eye. <laughs> I learned a long O oh, A curly right. And your address. <laughs> Foothills Drive, I believe. 190 Foothills. 
Now, here's the box number. <laughs> Came to Alaska in 50. So I've been here a while. But I learned a long time ago in these meetings, stand up, speak up, and shut up. I'm opposed. I did not know one thing about this until last night because I've been out of state for two months. And I appreciate his interest and his respect, I guess, Chuck Winters. But had I been here, I would have encouraged him. No. I appreciate maybe it's an honor, but not to be a problem to others. And that is where I stand. I'm not favorable to changing Kenai to right away. Okay? Any question? I'm through. <laughs> Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak on the issue? Good warm afternoon. <clears throat> I'm Norman Erickson. I live at 255 Kenai Avenue, Soldatna, and have for uh, 42 plus years. I've seen a lot of growth within the city of Soldatna, many of such through Curly Wright, who is my neighbor. Although he doesn't live on Kenai Avenue, he lives at 190 Foothill. <laughs> I guess one of my main questions, which you have my letter, but is why not, if anything gets renamed, why wouldn't you name the street that he actually lives on? I'm not sure if his nephew knows where he is. But uh, Curly uh, is uh, their well-respected family within the community. The rights, as well as many other citizens of the city, deserve some type of recognition. My question, again, is why Kenai Avenue? Why not Foothill? if anything, or perhaps a sign like we see in other areas, uh, the Parks Highway, where a trooper was killed. They have not renamed it the Parks Highway, but they have put up a sign that is his name and the Parkway. Perhaps maybe on the spur, where Curly has owned many, many successful businesses over the years, one including my teenage daughter, who he hired by walking by our house and said, want a job. He has done that with many a person within this community over many years. Uh, if their street needs to be named in, for the rights, uh, I think that's very, very nice. To me, working, I did work for the city of Soldatna many years ago. And as a maintenance foreman, I know all we have to do is go out and change the street signs. That doesn't work if you're a homeowner or I'm not involved as much as superstructures with all the businesses or whatever, but it creates a total nightmare for a homeowner too. Not only my banking, all my subscriptions, all my people over 42 years from outside that I know, everything has to be changed to ch just to change a name. Street signs easy. Changing all that other stuff is not very easy for an individual and if I was involved as much as Superstructures, who is another neighbor across the street, very nice neighbor, I'm their night watchman for anything that goes on over there. But uh, it creates quite an inconvenience for the homeowner, too. So that's just a few. You have my letter, so I won't go into it any farther. But I respect Curly highly. I've been... I hope a good neighbor to him. He's been a very good neighbor to me. So if something is to be done, whether it be Kenai Avenue, Foothill Avenue, or a future street named after him within the city, I, I would be glad for that, with the exception I'm opposed to Kenai Avenue being changed. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak on this issue? Um, anybody, um, there's no other members of the public or anything. Okay. 
Um, with no one else wishing to speak, the public hearing is now closed. Are there any commission comments? Um, I'm going to jump in just quickly, and um, you don't have, this is maybe a rhetorical question, but also a real question. Um, for someone who has given so much to the city, I am curious, um, Mr. Wright, how you would like to be honored. And maybe we can talk about it later. Um, but in some cultures, it is bad luck to have a street name or a place named after you. And so I respect um, your wishes. And uh, But, you know, I think there are many ways to honor a person. I think this gesture was done out of respect and admiration. Um, and we sometimes, you know, do a thing we think we would like when, in fact, it's maybe not the thing that would be really... Um, uh, kind or uh, something that the the person actually would really would really like. So that's my question. Um, that's mostly rhetorical, but I think that the comments speak for themselves tonight, and I'll leave it at that. Are there any other commissioners who wish to comment? Yeah, Commissioner Anderson here. Um, like you said, Kaylin, I think it's a grand gesture to offer that up, but not at the inconvenience of our residents um, and our businesses. If the na um, neighborhood or the residents of that street were all for it, I think it would be great. And then, I mean, Curly's still here, so if he had something to say about it and agreed with it, that'd be awesome. If he didn't want to, I would respect his opinions as well, but... I don't think that we should put our residents and our businesses at any kind of hardship over or so, over something that, I mean, especially the individual doesn't even want, you know. So, um, otherwise, thank you for everything you've done, Curly. Commissioner Burton, I, I just want to echo what uh, Commissioner Anderson and. Madam Chair uh, Fadla have said so far. Uh, first of all, thank you for all you've done for this community. And I have to, uh, I have a lot of admiration and respect for an individual who has the humility you have. Uh, your nephew wants to honor you uh, and your thought is on the community. You don't want to cause hardship, any type of hardship for the community. So I really respect and admire that. Um, <clears throat> And the, to the uh, other suggestion to the Foothill Road uh, renaming, uh, by, by my count, there were less, uh, there was a smaller number of mailing addresses at Foothill Road. And if, uh, I mean, compared to Kenai Avenue, I mean, that would uh, be a, a fairly good suggestion if uh, the city wanted to continue with that. But... Uh, I think in the future, if, if you would like to be remembered, uh, we should take steps towards that. So, thank you. All right, so tonight uh, this commission is making a recommendation, like John said, of a legislative matter to our city council who will ultimately make the decision. Um, and our main goal um, is to state whether each individual of the commission thinks that the street should be renamed or kept as is, which will be identified by our vote. And just um, a reminder that the resolution is recommending the city council rename Kenai Avenue to Wright Avenue, so a no vote will honor um, Curley's wishes to not have that happen. All right, can we call for the vote? Anderson? No. Burton? No. Murray? No. Totfest? No. Smithwick Ailey? No. Fadla? No. Motion fails. Well, thanks for everyone for coming and for sharing thoughts. All right, we have no unfinished business, no new business, and um, 
we do have time now for public comments without prior notice. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to comment? All right, I think we're good there. Um, and I think John, do we have a report from the Economic Development and Planning Director? Is our next. Prior to that, um, we'd like to chat about the, the CIP, if that, if that, is that what you're uh, referencing? Um, oh, the informational item, sorry, yes, excuse me. Yes, yes a report okay. um, that reviews and discusses FY 2022 Capital Improvement Plan. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. So the, um, typically, as you know, uh, Mr. Cornelis is here um, on these occasions sharing with you uh, the CIP, the CIP process. Um, and gathering your input. He was unable to make it today. He had another engagement. So um, I'm going to be filling in as best I can. Um, the, uh, so some of the things that uh, I do hope to cover with you is uh, first that, uh, as you probably recall, and for new folks, uh, the CIP, the, the Capital Improvement Program, is a five-year planning document. And it's, it's a long-range uh, document. Uh, typically, the first year of the, the document is usually implemented, provided the council uh, uh, approves it. Um, it's, it's usually funded in some respect or another. Um, the, the projects in the following years, typically then, once, one, the once the first year is funded, uh, the projects in the following year will get move up the chain every subsequent year is, is typically how that works, in addition to new projects being added along the way. So the CIP that we're talking about tonight is not um, a list of, of projects that are funded, just projects that are identified as potential projects for the city. Um, let's see here. So one of the things that I do want to share with you, and I believe I provided to you, um, is uh, some information regarding last year's um, last year's CIP. And um, one of the uh, one of the items that uh, is important is that typically the the items that are on the CIP are items that usually cost in excess of fifty thousand dollars and that result in a tangible fixed asset. So these are kind of the brick and mortar type of, of projects. There are a few exceptions to that to include the storefront improvement program. That's a program um, where we aren't building the bricks and mortar, but um, through the grant program that that program. Um, private sector is, is supplying the bricks and mortar, and we're providing matching funds. And also the dollar figure on that has historically either been $15,000 annually or, or um, for 22.5 in the last few years. Um, let's see. At, usually when you see the CIP, which is in your packet, and you have five years there, what you're seeing are costs that are estimated, actual costs, especially considering what's happening in today's economy and um, in today's marketplace. Um, they, can be, they can be off quite a bit, um, as we're, we're finding out. But what you see then in the five-year um, CIP from last year in fiscal year 22 up on the screen, a number of projects, their estimated cost, uh, and then a brief description. So some of the, the things that were uh, funded last year include those downtown parking improvements, the storefront improvement program, a master plan for the West Readout property at the very end of West Readout, um, Riverview Park green space, Farns, uh, Farnsworth uh, Park fall protection replacement, uh, some improvements to the HR manager's office, a uh, mechanics shop design study report, and then upgrades here to the furniture in this, this room. So those items, excuse me, <clears throat> were all funded, and uh, most of them accomplished, some of them still ongoing. Um, what we have today is an opportunity for you to provide your input into the process, and what I did last year, which was a little different from previous years, is after, um, after we had our meeting with uh, Mr. Cornelis, what I did is I prepared a memo that, um, that I typically do, which is 
the Economic Development uh, and Planning Department's recommendations for EB and uh, for for the CIP. Um, I modified it to include your recommendations as a separate section rather than integrating them, so that it would be clear to Mr. Cornell and to the City Manager that um, these are the wishes of the the Commission, in addition to the Department recommendations. So that was that was something different, something new, and um, we'll continue. We'll continue that uh, that model and um, uh, this year. So I think the I was going to say there was one other thing I wanted to share with you here. Let me see if I can find it. Um, I was going to share with you some of the things that were oh um, that were recommended last year by by. This, this body and, and by the Economic Development uh, Planning Department. So uh, you, a number of things that were talked about last year, including incorporating um, homeless teens into the proposed Karen Street project, um, providing a pedestrian bridge across the Kenai River, six foot sidewalks on both sides of Marydale, um, which incidentally um, did get added to the CIP for the years 2023 to 2024. Um, what, I, what I'm not clear on, though, is, um, and I have to check with Kyle, whether that, whether that six foot is just an expansion of the ones planned for one side or is on both sides. So I will get back with you on that. Um, and then uh, another item that you shared last year was the permanent, uh, or the creation of a permanent designated space for rodeo grounds and associated uses. One thing that was added to the CIP in the year 2025 uh, was the inclusion for, let's see if I can find it. The uh, Centennial Kay Beach property master plan, which um, would incorporate those, uh, the comments that the, the planning commission made regarding um, a plan for those uh, rodeo grounds and associated uses. And then the last thing I believe that I had down was the extension of the sidewalk trail along the east side of the Sterling Highway from Devon Drive to Twin Buckle Terrace. Uh, this would provide greater access to Fred Myers and the homes and businesses along Fleet Street and Shark Path Mile. So those were the, the uh, key items that the commission mentioned last year. And then um, the department also made a number of recommendations to include the downtown parking improvements on As at the Aspen parking lot. Um, funding of the storefront program, storefront improvement program, the uh, funding for the down, for downtown sign improvements, and, and what that is is a continuation of the downtown beautification effort, which would include wayfinding signs for downtown. That was included in the CIP in year, uh, the second year. We also recommended um, the uh, feasibility study, as, as uh, I've already mentioned, uh, for the relocation of ball fields and the relocation, essentially creating that planning document uh, that, I, that you, you guys also identified. So those are the, the main uh, items that I wanted to share with you. And I think at this point, what I want to do is find out if there's any questions regarding the process uh, for the CIP or any questions in general about the CIP, what it means. and. Uh, and then, um, if there's no questions, yeah, just have a discussion about potential projects that you feel are appropriate for including in the, the capital improvement uh, plan. So thank you. Thank you, John. Um, are there any commissioners who have questions for John? Uh, Jenny Smithwick, Ailey. I was curious, the West Readout property master plan, is that on the river end of West Readout? Okay, I haven't heard of that, I guess. It's um, a, I, like gonna be a park or? Oh, no, it's a, it's a request for funding to develop a comprehensive plan or a master plan for that site and includes two large parcels um, that at the end of West Readout, you've got a, a subdivision and then you've got an informal trail that a lot of people use uh, come July when the Reds are in and it provides uh, river access. It's about a 
20 minute walk one way, about a 10 minute walk another way to the river. It gets heavily used. It's owned by the city. Uh, that park or that parcel also includes a cultural site, um, a Kanaiti site. And so there's concern about degradation to that, that cultural site. There's concern about degradation to the riverbank, um, just about access in general, and uh, the role that potentially that parcel could play in the city's uh, in the city's future. So what we requested was a um, an opportunity to provide funding to get a master plan to look at that in a comprehensive way because it's it's a it's a big piece of land, um, but it's also abutted by um, a number of homes. There's a couple subdivisions that abut it, and so any kind of improvements there may have some potential impacts on those neighborhoods. And so we wanted to be thoughtful in whatever gets recommended there. And so we recommended that a, a plan be developed to include some public engagement and a comprehensive look at it. Yeah, I'm happy to see that in the um, in fiscal year 2022. And it seems like the there and year five, there's often the large pedestrian bridge crossing from that property to KTC, and that seems like a master plan would incorporate some of those ideas um, and see if it's something that actually the community needs. Is that fair? Um, I to don't know that um, that the scope as envisioned by uh, uh, our parks director anyway included the thought of, of the bridge. Um, is that, if, if that's what you're referencing? Yeah. Um, makes sense to me since it, it would it, emanate from that it, it park. It makes sense to me too, potentially as a, as a, you know, as a, as a site that would, um, probably the most logical site in the city as far as, you know, if something ever gets built that yeah. uh, it be considered in that process. So, um, yeah, I think we will have the opportunity when this does get started to ensure that that is considered. But I will also bring it up to uh, Andrew and to uh, the administration. Thanks. Commissioner Anderson here. Um, on the Sadatna Creek Park trail, parving, uh, trail paving and homestead sidewalk, is that the main dirt trail that goes down to like the river there would be the paving portion? On right here. So that Creek Trail Paving and Homestead. Uh -huh. So uh, uh, thank you. Uh, that is a project that we applied for about three years ago. It was um, an Alaska Transportation Alternatives Program. It was a grant uh, project that um, we applied for. We were one of the uh, top um, top rated projects in the state, and we were to receive uh, funding and. Um, we're still waiting uh, for that funding, but what that project does, um, when it does get funded, and they are slowly moving forward, is um, it would pave all of the trails in Sobotna Creek Park that are currently all gravel, so it would pave them to improve accessibility. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, it's uh, to improve accessibility for disabled individuals by providing a paved service of appropriate grades. Um, so it would do that, it would extend those trails uh, past the Watershed Forms building, the old Stolberg House, uh, all the way uh, to what is uh, now known as 47th Avenue, which is a right-of-way that goes past the, the Kenai River Brewery. Okay. That trail would then turn up 47th Avenue, and um, can, Jim, is it possible that do we have the clerk over here? Yeah, that might be. Um, it would go up 47th Avenue to the brewery, and then at that point, um, sidewalks would be installed on both sides of the street and connect to a former trail over by the bookstore that went over to Lindenberry Lane. Hmm. So it's an opportunity to provide that, that, that part of the linkage that we eventually want to create all the way to Swiftwater Park. We'd like to see Swiftwater connected with some land. Okay. But So that would be within the park, like where the grass is. Those would all be paved, like where in the wintertime we somehow... Uh, they have hockey, or I mean, skating rinks sometimes there. Those uh, would be paved and then all the way down and then to you, where you just explained. Correct. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So, let's and see. that's hopes for this year if they can match it. Is that? 
So the match isn't an issue. The, the problem has been um, DOT, typically, or I should say historically in the past, DOT has just passed the money through and given it to the city. They want to now manage projects. And when mm -hmm. the state gets involved in managing pro projects, it's usually overnight. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, they have a, a, a larger process. Um, they're not quite as nimble as, as the local community is, and um, expenses tend to increase, and that's mm -hmm. what's happened. Um, we are now working with DNR, and we are actually going to have a site visit with them um, next week. So oh. it's, it's positive in that things are, are finally moving, but we, we don't anticipate the project to get underway until late next year. Um, and it might be 2024 before it's actually completed. Mm. But yeah, Jen, maybe you can point with the cursor as to, so that's, that's 47th. So it would come, there's the Soberg house. Um, it w the trail would come across the closest to uh, the Hutchins property, somewhere through those woods, somewhere you know south of Hutchins property and north of the Solberg House, and then connect to 47th, go up 47th, all the way to uh, Homestead, and then sidewalks all the way okay. past past the, um, the bookstore, and then. Where Jen's got her cursor, there's a historic trail that mm -hmm. goes through the woods and across the Rotten Creek to Lindenberry Lane. And then that bridge right there too. Yep. Yeah, that's. Would that bridge get improvements? Or it would, would not. That's a okay. that's a relatively new bridge. It's oh, okay. installed by the Watershed Forum. It's a pedestrian bridge. It's new and it's in great shape. Yeah. And so another future project then would be from that point where Jen's got her cursor. Um, creating a, a separated pathway along Lindenberry to connect to Spring Water. Mm. Oh, that'd be great. We're, we're hoping, yeah, that by providing that kind of linkage, the you know, campers over at awesome. Swift Water and just the residents who live in that area would yeah. have you know, pedestrian access, bike access to be able to uh, quickly connect to our downtown. That'd be great. Thanks, John. Commissioner Burton, I, I have one question uh, with the potential follow-up on downtown parking. First question is, are there any uh, updates on what that plan looks like, um, parking downtown? Sure, thank you for the question. Um, we are rolling forward with the uh, thought that we are going to actually begin construction on the Aspen Street parking lot this summer. So the design has just been completed. We are, the only thing we're waiting for right now is uh, the, the signature on a, an agreement between the city and Arby's. Arby's is going to, uh, provided we all, we all sign, allow us uh, to install a landscape uh, um, buffer or a landscape island on their property rather than on the Aspen property. Um, and the reason that's important is that it will allow us uh, a, a full access out. So we'll have full 20 foot uh, parking spaces, we'll have 24 foot access out, and then we'll have a nice green space in the middle of that lot. So it gives us uh, an extra eight feet to work with within that uh, property and provides us there an opportunity to do some nice things, I think, in there that um, will, you know, could be something like a, um, a farmer's market, uh, could be like a food truck type rodeo, could be an, any number of uses that will occur there. So that's, that's rolling forward, and we anticipate that we're going to break ground this year. It, it'll likely be end of summer. What we don't want to do is, um, <laughs> we'd like it to, to start sometime after um, our busy season, especially the park busy season. We don't want to destroy the, the very parking that everybody's come to rely on for Wednesday in the park. So it would likely be an, an August type of, August, September type of project. So um, being new, um, I assume the CIP gets generated by the departments and by the city council. I mean, in terms of what's on it. Uh, thank you for the question. So uh, it starts uh, it starts like this with um, our usually our uh, 
city engineer, our public works director, coming around to the different commissions, uh, including parks um, and uh, PNZ and the airport commission, and gathering feedback. At the same time, the uh, public works director is uh, gathering input from all the department heads. And each department usually, you know, they get together and talk about um, what, what they feel the needs are within the community and specifically for their department and their, their goals as a department. All that input then goes to the, uh, uh, the public works director. The public works director compiles it and presents it to the city manager. Uh, the city manager and public works director then present it to the city council for their review along with a recommendation of a, of a plan based on um, the needs and priorities, uh, the available budget, what kind of granting opportunities are out there. So um, a number of things go into it. And um, like I said, too, this, this is the planning document. And then usually um, at the following uh, meeting or, or two to three uh, meetings after, the council is usually presented with a, a budget and um, the budget to implement the first year of that plan then is usually, you know, follows uh, within, a, within a month or so. Did that answer your question? Um, yeah, I think what's, what's you know, what you don't, what I don't see, and, and maybe it's just I'm new, but it doesn't say funding source. It just says we're going to spend this much money. Well, you know, for example, the, the sports center is in for at least about 18 million. And is that bonded, is that bond, is that? City uh, reserves. I'm just curious, right? How we intend to fund things. I, I, if it's in the budget, one assumes that we have money in hand or or what have you from from the grantors if the grantors have given us notice, or we intend to fund it out of. Sure, and and some of them are unknown. There are things that have been, have been identified, like uh, the, like the field house, where um, we we know. Uh, what our options are, but uh, the council um, needs to uh, agree that it's a priority. And, and at that point, then um, staff is given the direction to, to seek out those funds um, and determine what kind of uh, opportunities might exist out there. In some cases, um, as you can see in the description for like the first two projects, the DOT projects, you can see that our, our, we're providing a local match for the, um, for example, the ATAP program, which is the asphalt transportation, but the funding itself is coming from the feds via the state. So when we do know where the funding is coming from, we do try to identify it under the description section. Uh, but certainly some of those big projects, like when we used to have the bridge, we used to list the, the bridge over the river at $10 million. We didn't honestly know where that was coming from, and we still don't know. Um, it would it would be an opportunity. Uh, it would be our uh, our responsibility, I should say, to to really do some research and, and identify. And so, one of the nice things is the city does have now under contract um, a professional grants grants person that is assisting us with those uh, grant researching. Abilities and uh, it, it's it's relieving some of our responsibilities uh, and, and putting it in the hands of someone that that has uh, the, the professional skills and someone who's um, managing grants uh, for for other organizations. So someone who's who's in the know, and uh, so we're hoping that having that kind of person on board will help us quickly identify pots of money that we can apply to these projects. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Burton, I just the second item on uh, two thousand twenty. Uh, let's see here, two thousand twenty-three here. Karen Street Park upgrades, the concrete slab soccer wall BMX. Uh, I'm just kind of interested to see if we can pull up a map just to see where that is. No, uh, it's, yeah, exactly where it is. It's the existing, uh, sorry, it's the existing skate park uh, over uh, near PCHS. Oh, okay, okay. I see. 
Correct. We don't, and I'm sorry, I don't know uh, much about this project. This was uh, a recommendation coming from our Parks Department, and I don't have a lot of knowledge with regard to the specific improvements and, and what the design is. Well, it's, it's kind of exciting to see that with uh, all the kids we have in this town, especially some of my own who love those kinds of activities. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a cool project to see. have a process question and a public service announcement. Um, I see that these bodies and department heads, um, you know, their opinions are collected by the engineer and then go to the public works director and then go to the city manager in terms of this um, CIP process. Where is a good place and when is appropriate timing for members of the public to be involved um, in suggesting improvements to their town? Or what, I mean, I think the answer is at all points, but um, yeah. Uh, you're absolutely right. So, you know, th this is an opportunity. That's why it gets noticed on our agenda and um, it's an opportunity for the public to, to share, uh, as is the, um, the council's hearing um, on this item as well. So, uh, certainly appropriate if anybody in the audience wants to make comments and suggestions, that uh, that's what we're here for is to hear them. And at what point does the, um, you know, for the projects for this year that are um, enumerated there, are they listed by, it looks like they're listed by, mm, no, never mind. The, are they listed by priority? Not within, not within each year. So okay. basically if they're in fiscal year, like for example, 2022, all right. of those projects are recommended for being funded. Okay. Um, they aren't ranked. So if a member of the public wished to add a project to this year or to, to bump it up from another year, how would they go about doing so besides bringing it forward now? Or do the, is there a deadline? Uh, the deadline would be the council's uh, decision on, on the CIP plan itself. Is. Um, I don't know that we have that date identified okay. at this point. Uh, we have a tentative schedule, and I unfortunately don't have that with That's me. That's fine. Sorry. In okay. Stephanie's letter, it says the July 28 meeting is when it will be introduced, and the public hearing is August 11th. I believe that that's after the fact, so I'm not sure if I'm reading that right. Are you looking at, was it last year's memo? FY22 capital budget. Right, so um, if I, I believe what you're looking at was uh, written last year, August okay. of 21, so. Oh, yeah. Yep, so that's, okay. yep, th this current year's. And okay. so I don't have, uh, I apologize, I don't have that. But okay, I can, I can no, that's fine. Provide it to you. Um, and my other question was um, the if we could know the name of the professional grants person who's now with the city, which is great news. I will get you that. I, I don't have that as well. Okay. No, that's exciting. Um, and then the PSA is quickly that um, uh, Department of Transportation is um, and the Alaska Municipal League is hosting a um, Safe Streets for All Grants in Alaska webinar on Friday, June 3rd at 10 a.m. And you could find that at the Alaska Municipal League website, I believe. Um, I will attend um, and I would encourage anyone who's interested in the public and any of our commissioners to join as well. Um, these um, quickly, I'll just read that, um, so the, it, there's $1 billion in funding for safe streets and roads for all. Um, applications are due September 15th. Um, John probably already knows about this. And um, basically, uh, these grants support planning infrastructure, behavioral, and operational initiatives to prevent death and serious injury on roads and streets involving all roadway users, including pedestrians, bicyclists, transit users, motorists, and commercial vehicle operators. Um, the grants are intended to improve roadway safety by significantly reducing or eliminating roadway fatalities and serious injuries throughout safety action plan development and implementation. So there are two types of grants, action plan grants and implementation grants, and more information will be available at the um, Safe Streets for All grants in Alaska, hosted by Alaska Municipal League this Friday, June 3rd at 10 a.m. Um, if you'd like more information, you can see me after the meeting. I think, sorry, and I bring that up for the public record because um, as staff, 
if staff has recommendations, I think it would be appropriate for this body to pull together a small working group to help see if there are ways that we as a, as a municipality um, could use this funding to accelerate some of the capital improvement projects on our list because especially because this turnaround time is quite um, short September 15th is going to be here tomorrow um, my uh, understanding is that um, even though this funding will be available for multiple years this first round might be more um, uh, a little easier to receive funding for projects um, so I would love to be it known on the record I would love to be a part of a working group um, with the public and other members of this body to help us get some neat things happening, more neat things happening in, in Soldatna and our environs. I'm wondering if, uh, if you know, with that uh, comment, if, if you have a specific project in mind, and, and then again for the rest of the commission, um, Charlene on Zoom, um, if there's any uh, specific projects that you have in mind, or uh, if there are certain projects that you see listed in years uh, two through five that, again, you see as key or important, um, it would be good for um, myself and also for, for Kyle to have those on the record and, and know that those are things that you support and would like to see um, move forward. Any other commissioner comments? Yeah, one more. Just on what John just said, the city web page update, I think, could help out with everything. Um, navigability and being able to see this CIP list, for example, and having a link to it and getting people's um, ideas and thoughts from the community on upcoming projects right there on the page. I mean, click a button, write it in, hit send, and they're done. I mean. We could get more involvement from the community through so many ways now. And I think our web page should be where most of them start, if not that, like a Facebook page. But I go to the web page a lot, and it would definitely be nice to have an up update on that sooner rather than later. It would be interesting to maybe have a Facebook page where there could be you, different things could be highlighted. Because I think even for me, and we're getting a lot of help right here seeing this, but it's like, a lot um, where if someone really wants to go to the website and find it they can learn some stuff but like small doses work better for most people you know like just highlight a project that's coming up then people if they're alarmed and they're like why would we want to spend money on that you know I mean it starts conversations or like if it if they're like oh my goodness what if we ever did that but there's so much like um, people just don't we don't necessarily know what's going on or what might be happening the general public doesn't know. You're more likely to flip through a brochure than an encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps the commissioners in this body could do a couple public um, uh, idea gatherings at Wednesday in the park. We could, yeah. we should probably do that. Um, sorry, thank you for that report. Um, and I, I'm going to move on to the next item, if, if everyone's okay with that. Um, now we're moving on to mayor and council reports. Uh, council member Nelson, are you, is he still with us? On I Zoom? am here, yes. Thank you. So just a, uh, I'll give, excuse me, I'll give a brief report here on just a few of the items and, and events that the council's been dealing with. Um, so uh, here recently at some of our meetings, a few pieces of legislation, we did approve the, the changes that were brought forth to the minor offense fine schedule and and those various changes after some uh, definite discussion on uh, some of the different things that were, were part of that. Hopefully that'll make things easier for uh, our planning department to be able to, to move forward with some of those things and, and get some items resolved. Um, as you've uh, no doubt seen, uh, certainly a lot of talk about spruce bark beetle and beetle kill trees, especially around our, our parks and rec areas. We approved funds, so it's a little bit confusing if you're looking at the, the legislation, but the council approved funds out of the city's ARPA funding uh, to uh, mitigate that. We 
were waiting for some grant funding that was a, a bit slow in coming through, but uh, the nice thing is that we, we got an update that that funding did in fact come through. So uh, that's coming from uh, FEMA funding and uh, that will take care of a lot of that first uh, run at the spruce bark beetle mitigation. However, there's quite a quite a bit, as we all know here in town to, to deal with, but that was uh, mainly focused on the safety issues around campsites and things. And they were really trying to get that done, of course, before Memorial Day weekend. Um, I think the other significant thing is uh, no change to our uh, mill rate levy for this year as proposed. Um, we've had a, a number of work sessions um, here in the last month or so. So just a, a few highlights. Uh, we did a work session on some of the priorities. So the, the city has a number that I'm not gonna remember, but just over a million dollars in ARPA funding. That's the American Rescue Plan Act. And there was some discussion on potential priorities and focus areas that could uh, that could take uh, take priority for, for some of those funds. And I think there was a lot of discussion at that uh, work session to, to take those funds and then try and do something to really remain in the spirit of the ARPA funding, which is that long-term recovery and, and resilience for our community. So um, I know the council gave some ideas, recommendations to administration. I'm sure they're working on that. We also had another um, work session on the mid-biennium budget update. So if you'll recall, the city of Savannah runs two years in their budget, but uh, they come forward here for the first time since they changed that with the, the mid-budget update and, uh, and gave some uh, information to council. A lot of those updates really have to do with, um, you know, costs that, that go up uh, year to year, things that may not uh, have been known uh, when the budget was originally done. So a lot of the cost uh, changes, the changes to the budget for the upcoming year are having to do with uh, payroll expenses, cost of living adjustments. Um, there was a significant hike in health insurance costs for employees. So um, those numbers uh, all come into play. Uh, also quite an adjustment, as you can imagine, in the uh, fuel uh, purchases, uh, fuel and snow removal items. So those are all in the uh, mid dining budget update to just adjust those numbers. And I believe that's up for public hearing next Wednesday. We also had a, a work session on the water and sewer extension update, uh, extension policy update. And so this was a, a request for administration to get some direction on what the policy would be, a potential policy to put together for water and sewer outside the city limits only. So um, those three work sessions have, uh, have taken place here in the last uh, month uh, with some good discussions in each one of those. Um, I think the last uh, real pending item, uh, just as we just get done talking about the CIP list is, uh, uh, you'll notice the field house is there and the, the priority not yet assigned. And I believe um, that we have a uh, work session discussing the field house um, coming up in our next meeting as well. Although I'm not 100% sure on that. I believe they were trying to put that together for the 8th. So that is a report from the, from the council. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you for that great report. I don't see any questions. Thank you for joining us, Councilmember Nelson. Thank you. Apologies, I couldn't make it in person tonight. Oh, and we um, we do have the uh, mayor here with us, um, Paul. Good well, to see I only you. had a couple of things I was going to talk about, but you kept bringing up more stuff and more stuff, so I'm going to probably get a little longer than I planned on. Uh -huh. um, first of all, I want to thank you all for serving on the Planning Commission. It's probably one of the... Uh, just one, it is the most important uh, commission we have in the city, and I appreciate all of you serving on it. Uh, you do have one vacant seat that should be filled at the next meeting. Um, and um, um, talked a lot about the CIP. Um, there's a lot of good projects on there. Um, we have hired or are bringing on board a, a firm called HDR to uh, assist us in grant writing. Uh, because there are so many infrastructure uh, bills, uh, grants out there and available. So um, we don't have all the expertise in-house, nor do the staff have that much time to be able to, to monitor and keep applying for those. These consultants will be taking a look at what's available, what we have as projects that uh, would fit in, and uh, make those applications and make sure they're done on a timely manner. Uh, we've talked about some of that CIP stuff on there. Uh, one thing to understand is uh, just because something's listed in, say, 2026 doesn't mean that's going to happen in 2026. It could happen this year. Things could be moved up. Um, and if uh, 
funding becomes available or it all of a sudden becomes a priority, it could move up. Um, as you mentioned, the field house, um, that's something that uh, we're looking very seriously at, and uh, we'll have a work session on that on June the 8th, and uh, we're looking at possibly bringing that into uh, uh, the October ballot uh, for uh, possible funding and, and, and building that facility. It's become obvious that it's something that's needed. Uh, I think there's a lot of support, not only in our community, but the all, of, all around us uh, for that need of another facility there. If we can keep the ice in year round and uh, have a, a, a room, a, a field house to do other events in. Um, there's a lot of good things up there. One of the things that uh, you mentioned earlier, Vadla, about the, uh, Ms. Vadla, about the um, um, uh, road safety issues. Um, something I've been asking the administration to take a look at with the infrastructure bill that's come out. If the pedestrian bridge that we have spoken about for years uh, is a possibility that that could be funded, uh, that would take people off of the, the highway bridge and put them onto a pedestrian bridge uh, for trail walking, um, cross-country skiing, bicycling, whatever. Um, I, I cringe every time I see little kids going across the bridge on their bicycle or trying to walk through there in the wintertime. So that's something that's being looked at. Uh, so there's a lot of good things going on. Um, we always look for input from everyone. Um, when we do this meeting for the uh, CIP, it's an open public meeting, and uh, there's usually a work session beforehand and then and the public uh, meeting to, uh, to take any kind of interest that people have in, in projects they'd like to see. Unfortunately, uh, some of the projects that people would like to see do not necessarily fall within the purview of the city of Soldotna. They're something that may be just outside it or something that, uh, something that we're just not involved in. Um, now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let John kind of blow his horn here and the staff and the administration um, blow their horn about the um, EDD grant that they just received here about two days ago. So, John, John. I was hoping you were going to take the uh, take that honor and, and uh, make that announcement as, as the you, mayor. You guys did all the work. Um, what Mayor Whitney is referring to is the EDA grant that we've been um, chatting about now for some time, and uh, it, it became official today. Uh, we received word that the project will be funded and uh, the total project uh, cost is uh, $450,000 uh, with 90000 coming in matching funds from the city of Soldotna. Uh, the remainder coming to the Economic Devel Development Administration. And uh, as you probably recall, the, the project is um, it's called the Soldotna Riverfront Redevelopment Project and is a planning project. And um, it's, it's exciting. We now have uh, 18 months to undergo this process and get a plan in place. Um, and that plan's going to include everything from things like site analysis um, uh, for um, specific properties that may have contamination or, or specific issues, feasibility analysis, cost be benefit analysis. It's going to take a look at uh, a market analysis so we can take a peek at what are our needs within the community? Uh, what are the needs in the, the larger area? Um, and so that when this is complete, we'll be able to target the appropriate businesses to try to bring to Soldotna in this new area. It's going to take a look at land development along the river um, with the ultimate goal of providing, again, a truly uh, walkable downtown, or, or, or I should say a downtown for Soldotna that we've never really had something that we can um, stroll down and enjoy the river, enjoy local businesses, have access to our parks, and most of all, have access to our river. And so that is the, the news, and thank you for letting me <laughs> make that announcement. Um, but it's, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's great news, and so we're all super excited. It's absolutely great, great news. Um, I can see some, uh, I can envision some very nice development down there, and something that'll, we'll be proud of, and the citizens of Soldotna will be proud of, and anyone who comes here will be envious of. So a lot of exciting things happen. Uh, we're looking at, a, I think, a bright future. Uh, it's a lot of work to be done. 
but uh, we've got a lot of different things going on on different fronts. Uh, we're also looking at bringing on a, a um, I guess you could say a full-time lobbyist to help the city and working in Juneau and trying to get additional funding that may come from the city, I mean from the state. Um, we can always hope, I haven't seen any in, what, six, seven years, so it's, we're hoping. So, any questions? Um, uh, uh, more just a comment on the field house. Um, I am really happy to see that that is moving forward. I know um, Nell's wanted it to happen as well, and just being in the community and being huge in the sports side of things. Um, it's going to be awesome in the winter to have somewhere to go, something to do other than the few outdoor activities we can do in the wintertime where you could be working on your summertime crafts all, all year. It would be really huge. Um, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be another great uh, area to host events and to bring more people to our town and, and help the local businesses with more an influx of individuals and, and people in general. So I'm, I'm really happy to see that it's hopefully making the next step and going to make it on to the, the fiscal years to come. So thank you. I was just curious if the um, work session on the field house on the 8th was open to the public? Yes. Okay, great. Um, I believe it'll be at 4.30, isn't it, John? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm sorry. I don't, okay. no, you know, I'm going to have to start bringing the... I bet it's the, on the website. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's been a lot, of, a lot of meetings going on lately. <laughs> yeah, um, summertime. A lot, a well. lot of things going on. Yeah. Um, and yeah, uh, like I said, they're, they're positive and... And uh, we're looking to really have a great time. And then the other question I had was that you mentioned um, the open public meeting for the, this CIP. And were you referring to this meeting as the open public meeting, or was there a prior one that was gathering ideas? I don't believe we have seen the, um, the CIP in front of the council yet. Um, if I'm, I, I'm expecting it to probably be July before that'll, that'll come up. Right. Uh, okay. And, and that. first, it'll go to a, a work session with a council, <clears throat> and then it'll eventually go to a city council meeting for a, a resolution to approve it. Yeah. No, I was, um, <coughs> at, and you probably heard me ask John earlier, but <coughs> you know, when is the the kind of the most ideal time to bring new ideas forward? Certainly, we can comment on what is on the CIP now, but if members of the public wish to bring new ideas up. Perhaps that um, work session is a good spot in addition to this meeting here anytime. But you're right; like it's um, it's a it's a complex um, list um, that uh, I think isn't extremely accessible. And it would be nice to for us as representatives of the city to be able to invite feedback from the public and to kind of direct them to a specific time and place when they could really um, comment at the appropriate time for, us, for it to actually bear, um, come to bear on the CIP process. Actually, any time is appropriate, sure. but okay. uh, I would suggest going through the administration first, bringing those suggestions okay. to the administration, and the administration can work on them and, and come up with cost figures and uh, timelines and things like that. Then it'll go to, the work, uh, go to a, a public hearing. Um, when the resolution is actually prepared. Uh, usually a work session isn't open for public testimony. It's just a, literally a work session and, and, and ideas and thoughts bounced around. Okay, anything else? I have a question about the meeting regarding the uh, field house. Yeah, first of all, is that June 8th? Yeah, it'd be June. a week from today. Okay, is there um, Zoom access? to this, or is this going to be a uh, internet closed uh, meeting? Good question. The council meeting will actually be on Zoom. I can't remember. Have we been doing the work sessions on? I don't know. I, I don't believe we have. Uh, but okay. like you say, the, the, the regular meeting is, but I don't believe we've been doing the work sessions. Um, that'd be something we could do. I, I'm, we talked to the city clerk about making sure it's uh, on Zoom. All of our meetings are on Zoom, but like I said, we've had so many lately, I'm not sure about work sessions and anything else. It's turning into a full-time job <laughs> lately. <laughs> and, and if John keeps going out there and working on getting more grants, we're going to be spending more time working on it. So, 
Anything else? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, so city manager is not here, but we do have um, our economic development and planning director, John Zarniski. Uh, thanks, and, and I think we've already covered a number of the things between uh, Councilman Nelson and Mayor Whitney. Um, you know, uh, Councilman Nelson mentioned 1.08, which is our code enforcement section, and so we just, um, or I should say, the council just approved that, as Dan mentioned, um, it was a comprehensive rewrite that involved uh, a number of departments. So um, the good news is it, uh, we will be a more effective, efficient uh, department uh, having that uh, those changes made to the enforcement section. Um, the uh, and right now, just so you know, the. Uh, the city clerk is working on getting those changes that were made to the enforcement section to the uh, state of Alaska to the, to the courts. Those have to go through, all those changes have to go through the courts and uh, be entered into the court system before we can uh, fully utilize it. So that's happening now. Um, we hope, Jen and I have been working on a uh, update to the, um, or actually a new section of code for accessory dwelling units. This is something that uh, has been talked about for a long time and we've uh, finally got a draft developed and hope to um, have that in front of you at your next meeting for a discussion. And then uh, with your recommendation, um, or recommendations I should say, it would go on to city council for, for their review. And I think that is that is about it. Uh, so if you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer. Um, Associate Planner Jennifer Hester, do you have any reports for us? I do. We report to you our code enforcement and violations. So I can start off with the good news is we have three that we've resolved lately. Um, at 35514 Kenai Spur Highway, we had an assembly operating without a zoning permit or a certificate of occupancy. They have since applied and received their zoning permit. At 44715 Sterling Highway, we had a business in violation of a signed code, and they have since corrected that. And we also had a mobile vendor without a permit, and they ended up moving from the Peninsula Center Mall temporarily to that parking lot. We have three outstanding violations that we're addressing, but we're working with those property owners at 173 Karen Street. We're working with the estate to help with a nuisance violation. At 355 Porcupine Court, we had a K-Rod violation, and there's a reclamation effort underway. And at 109 Riverview Avenue, there was a business operating without a zoning permit. They've applied and not received their zoning permit. Thank you. Thank you. Um, commissioner comments. So, anyone? No comments? Mark? Thanks. I did have one thing that was brought to my a concern brought to my attention and um, I've experienced the same thing with my property um, the required city landscaping um, gets gets dumped on all winter with sand and gravel and everything um, and the, the burden and it is a burden of cleaning that up is left on the property owner who was required to put in that landscaping um, so on my property I pay to have my parking lot plowed and sanded all winter long and then in the spring I pay them again to come and clean up all the sand and haul it away. Um, they don't get any sand on my landscaping beds but I don't know if it's a combination of DOT and the city um, that it's it's a huge um, job that I have to contract out every spring just to clean mine. So I know everyone else along the Sterling Highway is doing the same thing too but just I don't know. I don't know if it could be a consideration that that be part of the city's, um, you know, we send out them to, pl the, to plow and to sand all winter and that possibly the cleanup could be included in the city's budget as well. I don't know. So I just wanted to put that out there because it was brought to me and I know it also to be true. So. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, I just want to welcome um, Mr. Murray uh, to the council and 
uh, forgive me if I uh, refer to you by first name and if you'd prefer me to refer to you as um, commissioner and your last name, I'm very happy to do whatever you would like. I, I am very happy um, that you came and joined our meeting and we strive to have these meetings be, you could sit on this side or that side. Um, we're all members of the city of Soldatna and um, we want this to be a, a group effort that feels welcoming and so that's why I um, try to keep these a little bit less formal um, like our previous Commissioner Chair, and I, um, so just let me know if you ever um, wish me to do otherwise, but welcome to the commission. Thanks for all the work and congrats on that great big grant. Too soon. Uh, with that, um, we're adjourned. I think I did that too soon. The next regular meeting will be held on July 6th at 5.30 p.m. In, right here in the city council chambers. Thank you. Now we're adjourned. <laughs>